Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm a research specialist with your union, IFPT Local 21. Uh, and I'm going to present the final installment in our pension education series that we've been giving over the last few months. Uh, this is what I'm calling Pension 103, the plan to defend our pension. Uh, just to go over the last two presentations in case you weren't able to see those. Um, for Pension 101, for the first presentation, it was a little more technical. Uh, we talked about what a pension is, how pension accounting works, how pension funding works. Uh, and just in case you didn't see it, there were three main points uh, that I wanted to make in that presentation. The first one is that the most important thing when it comes to pension funding is to have a plan to make sure that the pension is funded over time. To have a plan to make sure that when benefits become due, we have the money to pay for them. It's not all that important to have all of the money on hand right now to pay out all of the future benefits that we owe. We just need to have a plan to get there. The second thing is that increasing new hires and improving our ratio of active employees to retirees means that we have stronger investment per performance in the fund and it overall means that the pension fund will be more sustainable. The third thing, and I think the most important thing, is just to know that we don't have to cut benefits to make sure your pension is sustainable. So for Pension 102, the second presentation, uh, this was more of bigger picture political context about why pensions are under attack and why some people seem to hate pensions so much. Uh, so there were three main points that I made in that presentation. The first one is that it's Wall Street. Uh, Wall Street backs the attacks on your pension. The second point is they have the money, but we have the people power, and that's why we've been able to fight back and win. And the third thing is um, we've been winning so far, and if we're ready and, we can, and we're willing to continue the fight, we can continue to protect your pension. So this third presentation, this is our final one, and the idea here, now that we have this context, now that we understand pensions and why they're worth defending, uh, what are we going to do about it? Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today. So uh, what we're proposing uh, is a five-step plan uh, to defend your pension. The first step is talking to your coworkers, going out and building majority support, um, and making sure that people understand what the pension is and, and are willing to fight for it. The second thing is electing pension advocates, both to your retirement board and also to your city council. The third thing is improving staffing, uh, filling some of these vacancies and transitioning people from part-time to full-time. The fourth thing, uh, increasing revenue for, for the city. The five, uh, number five is fight for a fair contract. So I'm gonna go through these one by one. Uh, so step one is just starting a conversation. Any campaign uh, needs to have, any union campaign needs to have majority support in order to be successful. And in order to get a majority of union members engaged in this issue, we need to go out and talk to them. Uh, we had an amazing amount of people show up to political shifts to volunteer this November, uh, which is amazing, but we're gonna need a bigger team. Uh, we're gonna need more people stepping up and taking leadership. Uh, and volunteering, knocking on doors, uh, volunteering to be on pension boards, things like that. So that has to start with going out and talking to your coworkers about the pension, uh, figuring out what they care about, asking them, you know, what do you want your retirement to look like? Is the pension one of the reasons that you came to the city in the first place? What are you willing to do to defend the pension? Uh, that's where it all has to start. So step two is electing pension advocates. Uh, I'm gonna start with talking about your retirement board. So for those who aren't familiar, uh, one of the really critical ways that we can take back control of our pension is through the board that has oversight over investment strategies uh, and how the pension fund is managed. So that board right now has seven members on it. Uh, four of the members are appointed, they're members of the public that are appointed by city council. Two members are city employees. There's one retiree representative, uh, and that's it. As of right now, the city employee representatives on the board, uh, both of them are not represented. They're both not union members. Uh, so that's not that great. Uh, 
But one thing you might notice here is that a majority of the board members are public seats, are, are these public members of the public appointed by city council. And there's a reason for that. Uh, that was a change that Chuck Reed pushed for back in 2010. So that's right before Measure B happened. Uh, the idea was to try to get more people on the board that weren't from the unions, uh, that weren't participants in the pension plan, plan and to get more uh, members of the public that didn't have a conflict of interest. What ends up happening is that you have a lot of people managing the pension that don't have an invest, uh, a vested interest in trying to maintain that benefit because they're not going to be collecting that benefit at the end of the day. Uh, in addition to creating, to changing how the seats uh, are organized and who can be on those seats, they also, um, the charter was amended back in 2010 to have these really high standards for who can be in the public seats. This might be kind of hard to see at home, I'm not sure, but um, this is a list of the eligible experience that you need to be one of the public members on the board. Uh, you need at least 12 years experience as a senior executive in pension administration, um, institutional investment management, uh, investment banking, uh, investment management, insurance experience, uh, or to be a university professor. People who are ineligible to be in the public seats are current or former city employees, current or former elected officials, uh, current retirees, union representatives, and family members of retirees. So these rules were basically written to um, to end up with a lot of folks from the financial industry on the board. Um, so this is what your board currently looks like. I know you definitely can't see that um, at home, but the uh, dates when these seats are, these terms are expiring are here. So you have um, seats expiring at the end of this month in November 2018, some seats expiring in 2019, there's two of those. Um, but this is who these folks are a Silicon Valley venture capital fund manager, a hedge fund founder, uh, a guy from a financial analytics firm owned by IBM, and that firm actually used to be owned by one of the ratings agencies. Uh, and finally, a financial litigation consultant and analyst. Uh, this guy especially provides assistance to hedge fund managers that are accused of fraud and to real estate developers. Uh, not exactly the folks that I would want managing my pension fund. And, you know, just in case you were thinking like, okay, you know, we want folks who have experience with investment markets. We want people who have experience in the financial industry because they'll probably get higher returns on the investments. Um, this is what all of that outside expertise has been getting you. Uh, this was a study that the city commissioned from a group at Stanford that looked at a group of peer pension funds. So they're pension funds from cities across the country that are of a similar size. Um, cities are other local governments. They have some counties in there too. And this is looking at the rate of return on different types of assets, um, different asset classes. The green is the peer group average. That's how your peer group performed. Um, the red is your is the federated retirement fund. That's your retirement fund. Um, and the blue is safety for the city of San Jose. What you're seeing here is that six out of nine of the asset classes for your fund underperformed compared to peer, uh, to peer funds. Uh, the city also did an audit that found that between 2014 and 2017, 41% of your actively managed funds underperformed their own benchmarks. Uh, we know that part of this is because of that active to retiree ratio and that it messes with how investments are managed. But part of this is just folks not doing a great job. Uh, there's also the, the uh, report that the city commissioned, their audit, also found some other ethics concerns, um, mainly that you're paying a lot more to investment managers than peer funds do, and you're getting a lower return, a lower rate of return as a result. So you're paying more for less. Uh, so what can we do about it? Uh, I think there's three things that we could do uh, that we could start talking about. One is we could get some union members on the board. Uh, there are those two seats for city employees and we need to get a union member there. The second thing is that we could identify some community leaders for those public seats that would fit that criteria. Uh, maybe we could find a university professor that is a pro-pension advocate 
um, or somebody who's really going to stand up for city employees. And the third thing is, like, this was a charter amendment uh, that was put in place in 2010. We could try to change the rules again. But in order to do that, we would need to have strong advocates on city council to get anywhere. Uh, so that brings us to the city council seats. Uh, these are all of the seats that are expiring in 2020. Uh, part of protecting your pension is going to be that we need to get some stronger folks uh, on the council. Right now, uh, my understanding is that we have three strong allies and two allies that we can count on sometimes. Uh, so we need to pick up a few more seats. This guy, Johnny Camus, he's termed out. He also supported Measure B, uh, supports pension reform. So this is great. This is an opportunity for us to get somebody else uh, in that seat who might be a stronger advocate for us. Um, Len Deep in District 4, um, Labor didn't run a really strong candidate last time, and my understanding is he also won by a pretty narrow margin. Um, so that's another place where we could try to get a good candidate to run and really use some boots on the ground, uh, go out and get a lot of volunteers, and, and get someone elected.